Hi and welcome along to AFTV News Daily. Good morning, it's the early edition. I hope you guys are all doing well today. Bit of a miserable day today in the UK. Uh, rain's falling, it's back to normal. After all that beautiful hot weather, it's kind of back to normal. But I hope that you guys are doing well as we enter. What is this? We're in the, what, fifth week now of lockdown. Oh, when's this ever going to end, man? We need to get outside, as I keep saying. Um, but listen, it's all good, man. Um, it's all about defeating the coronavirus. It's all about getting through this. You know what I mean? This is not going to last forever. I'm convinced about this, that, you know what I mean, things will improve, things will get better. And encouraging signs, again, from a football point of view, um, encouraging signs from the virus point of view, and that we're starting to see it flattening out. Um, still way too many people dying which is really, really sad, but encouraging things from a football point of view in that the Premier League, they're starting to talk now about coming back. Now, they're tentatively looking at a few dates. Um, I've got here uh, June the 8th is a, a date that they're looking at the possibility of starting um, the Premier League. And remember, it would be behind closed doors. I'm not sure if that's still being a bit optimistic, we're about to enter into May. I suppose you could say, all right, if teams kind of get back to training, but you've seen Arsenal players have gone back to training. So several other teams actually have gone back to training, but they're only training on their own. They're not training yet as a team. It's just like players going out and just training on their own, on a pitch, and then going home, traveling in on their own, leaving on their own. Now, until there's testing, mass testing for all of the players, and staff and stuff like that, I still can't quite see how they'll be able to meet that date of June the 8th. But that's one of the dates they're aiming for. And then maybe to then finish the season on July the 27th. Um, that's the talk. So that would be what you're talking about, six weeks to get those last 10 games completed. Um, there's also talk about the transfer window. Now, of course, uh, the transfer window would normally be, I mean, because we're, we're entering into May, normally we're talking about that's the end of the season. It's like, the, you know, the last few games of the season. It would have ended early May this year as well because we had the Euros scheduled to take place. Um, they're going to push the transfer window if they do start the season June and end around about July time. They're talking about pushing the transfer window out to August. So it wouldn't up until around about August time. So it's going to be lots more speculation leading right up to that. Now we've got months of it, um, but they won't open the, the transfer window to around about August. And then they then hope to then start the new season in September. So that would start late as well. Remember, um, it normally starts around about August. <clears throat> I mean, I'm always moaning and saying that this should start in September anyway. Um the, se the, the, the Premier League season every year seems to start earlier and earlier and earlier. And I don't know, I just hark back to when I was a kid. It was like September time it started. It seems to be like, you know, the start of August nowadays. But definitely that's going to be pushed back. And it's more than likely looking at a season would start in September sometime. Um, and the transfer window will be in January. So it's tentative steps. There is a will over here in the UK, even from the government, um, to get the Premier League season finished. they I think that even the government look on it and think it would be very important from a psychological point of view, from a point of view of people looking at things and starting to see things and say, well, it's kind of getting back to normal if they see football, the Premier League, played. Um, they made that decision over there in Holland where they said that, you know, no events until September, so they're just, you know, they've cancelled their season, but I just cannot, unless we was to get a really massive second wave and a really big outbreak again, I can't see that happening over here. I do think we're going to complete the season. I, I, I do, though, think it will be behind closed doors. As a matter of fact, I've kind of had like a couple of, um, at Arsenal, a couple of people I know there have told me that they've been told it's definitely going to be behind closed doors. So that's what we're looking at going forward. But at least it's progress towards getting back to seeing football. And I think that's what we'd all love to see, you know, 
some games being played. You know what I mean? That's what I'd really like to see. But obviously, with that transfer window being pushed out, there's going to be lots and lots and lots of speculation. Um, talk today about Henrik Mikatarian. Now, Henrik Mikatarian uh, playing over in Roma this season. He's out, he's been out there on loan for the season. Um, he's at, he's he's done well over there. He's done very well over there, even though he's still had his injury problems. Seems to really like it over there in Rome. He's just recently had um, uh, a baby, which was born in the city of Rome as well. And he wants to uh, stay over there. Now, the boss of Roma, Paolo Fonseca, was on, um, did an interview on Russian TV yesterday. And he also made it very clear that he wants to sign Henrik Mikatarian. Um he definitely wants him. Mikatarian wants to sign for Roma. So it's just really in the hands of Arsenal to negotiate this one and get it done. Um, of course, Arsenal would love to get him off the wage bill. He's on very high wages, well over £100,000 a week, has not delivered, has not lived up um, to what we thought he might be. It's just not worked out for him at all in the Premier League, full stop. First of all, at Manchester United and and, you know, coming to Arsenal, probably did a little bit at Arsenal, but still hasn't worked out for him there. And um, Arsenal are keen to move him on. The sticking point, of course, is Arsenal won around about £22 million for him. Forget that. They're not going to get that. Um, Roma said to be willing to pay anything from about 10 to £15 million, probably airing on the side more of the 10 because, you know, um, with the coronavirus crisis and that, they're just not going to have the money. The money's not going to be floating around from those Italian teams in particular. So what is going to happen with this? I, I, I think Arsenal are just going to have to just, listen, just say to themselves, we're going to have to take a hit here and move him on and try and get him off of the wage bill because he's a very, one of the highest earners at the club and he's not even at the club. All right, Roman are probably paying half of his wages at the moment, but they just need to move on from Henrik Mkhitaryan now and get him off the wage bill. We've got players in those positions that are covering, not just covering, doing a lot better than what he was doing. So we just need to try and move him on, free that money up to bring in other talent. Um, Willian, we spoke about him yesterday. Now, Willian, <clears throat> we all know he's on a free um, this summer. So he's available to go on a free um, contract. Uh, Chelsea are not going to be re-signing him. Um, his agent, Kia Draption, um, is very close to the Arsenal um, team that does all the transfers. He's very good friends with them. And uh, he's looking after him. And they've apparently, um, if you was to believe some of the talks that are going around, have been in talks already um, about uh, Willian. However, Willian and his agent, Kia Draption, are saying that Willian wants... £120,000 a week. <laughs> wow. Now you know why Chelsea have said, no, we're not going to re-sign him because of those wage demands. Those, are, I mean, listen, he's a quality player. So you would expect him to want good wages, you know what I mean? Because he's a top quality player. So there's, there's no no point in saying that, you know, he's, you know, oh, well, how, he's, well his, his, his wages are always going to be high, but one hundred and twenty grand. That's too high. I don't think Arsenal should be going anywhere near this right now, in my opinion. For a player that's 31, he wants a three-year deal as well, so that will take him up to the age of 34. I think Arsenal need to look elsewhere. He's a quality player, but number one, we don't really need him at the moment. And number two, on those wages, I'm sorry, that is way too high. Um, and I would be... I'd be shocked if Arsenal signed him, you know, on those sort of wages. I think if they did sign him on those sort of wages, you'd have to look at it and say that's a dereliction of duty. We shouldn't be signing a player that age. I mean, if we're going to do that, then use the funds on Aubameyang. You know what I mean? So, no, nah, I hope when I see that, that that deal doesn't happen because we just do not need that right now. A player that we could do with, though, is um, Hossim Orea. Now, Remember when we had Adam from Get French Football News on um, last week? He was bigging this guy up and he was saying, listen, he's the real deal. This guy is a top quality midfielder. He's got everything. And he's like, he would improve Arsenal so much. He's only young. Well, he's 20, 21. And um, 
you know, he's one of the most talked about players in French football right now. Very creative, top player. Yet another one being produced by Lyon. They seem to produce so many very good players. Now, um, the Lyon, Lyon president was on uh, their website yesterday and he was talking about um, or Aurea, who has a, you know, he's got a five-year deal that he signed only in 2018. So he's under a long contract. Well, how is it that these teams are always able to do stuff like that? Long contracts for their their very best players, so that and we can't at Arsenal. Well, or we in the past we haven't. But anyway, that's another matter. But he's on a long contract, and um, the owner of, of the club, the president of the club, um, was saying that you know we want him to stay. We desperately want him to stay. He's a top quality player. However, if he wants to leave. They're not going to stand in his way. They, you know, they can't stand in the way of a player that wants to go. Um, and that kind of opens the way for clubs to try and go in and try and um, get him. Now, his valuation is around about forty million pounds, which, on the one hand, is a lot, but then on the other hand, as I said, top prospect, really highly thought of would be an ideal replacement for Mesut Ozil, and he's still very, very young. It would be a punt because, you know, you don't, you still got to say, is he going to come? Is he going to deliver over here in the Premier League? We've seen other players come from France sometimes on those big price tags, and it hasn't worked out. But he would be an exciting signing if Arsenal um, did get him. And I do think that the fans would enjoy watching him play. The games I've seen him play, he's looked a very, very good player indeed. So we're going to have to wait and see how that one develops out. Would Arsenal be able to afford that? And that valuation as well might be, again, too high with this coronavirus crisis going on. But it does suggest to you that Leon would be willing to sell him at the right price. And do you guys think that that would be a good signing for Arsenal, love for, to hear from you guys. And uh, what about Samuel Umtiti? How many times has this guy, Samuel Umtiti, been linked with Arsenal over the past few seasons? Of course, he's very good friends with um, Alexander Lacazette. Um, French again, um, centre-back, 26 now. Um, played in the World Cup, did well in the World Cup. Hasn't really hit off at Barcelona. And a lot of that has been due to injuries. This guy gets a lot of injuries. Do we want to be going there with injuries again? Uh, only 11 appearances this season for Barcelona. And a lot of that has been down to the fact that he picks up so many injuries. And um, there's a Spanish outlet called Sport that are claiming that Mikel Arteta wants to sign him. Um, he's very interested in signing Samuel Mtiti this season. As I said, he's, he's got friends at Arsenal already, so he'd fit in, I'm sure, pretty quickly. Um, probably fit in quickly because he, <laughs> the injuries, he'd be nowhere to go. <laughs> We've got so many of them. But um, no, seriously, um, Napoli uh, were the favourites to sign him. They were said to be the team that were really, really interested in signing him um, this summer. However... Um, because of the coronavirus crisis, which has hit it, Italy hard, um, a lot of those clubs in Italy are kind of drawing back on possible signings. And it's said that Napoli are sort of, you know, really cooled on their interest in trying to sign on TT. Now, could it be a good signing for Arsenal? Would you like to see Samuel TT at Arsenal? Would he be, for you, a perfect signing? I mean, Samuel TT and say Saliba as a combination going forward. Because he, he is, you know, even though he's 26, which is not an old age, he's still got many years left in him. He's a very experienced international player. Um, and he's been playing at Barcelona with the best. So what do you think? Do you think that Samuel Umtiti would make a very good signing for Arsenal? Or do you look on it and say to yourself, too injury-prone, do not go there. We've had too many injury-prone players over the years. We cannot afford to go and bring in a player. And again, his wages would be high. We cannot afford to go and bring in a player. The next minute, you know, he's sitting half of the season on the treatment table. So love to get your opinions on this one. Samuel Umtiti, would he be a good signing for Arsenal? As I said, reports today that Mikel Arteta... Um, 
really interested in him, would love to bring him in. That's according to this outlet over in Spain. I've got to say, some of them Spanish outlets can be very unreliable. Um, and everybody's searching for a story right now because of the coronavirus crisis and no football being played. However, we've been interested in him before. Could it happen this time? Um, let me know what you think. Samuel Umtiti. All right, let's get into some of your comments out there. Um, hear what you guys have uh, are thinking and what you guys have got to say about some of the points that I've raised. Um, <laughs> Neil Gunner <laughs> says, uh, um, I think he's on about, obviously, the Samuel Umtiti. He says uh, it'd be a good signing for the medical room. <laughs> uh, um Usman says, what about Partey? Well, there's been, again, more rumours today about Partey, that uh, Partey, you know, Arsenal are still negotiating for a deal, etc. cetera, um, but no real movement on that one. Um, Kyle B says, fans asking for Fraser. Um, what has he done this year? He was a one-season wonder. That's uh, Fraser who plays for uh, Bournemouth. He's got a good point, Kyle B. I mean, last season... He was excellent. I think he was one of the leading players with assists um, in the whole of the Premier League. This season, he's been dreadful. I mean, he's been so anonymous in games. Now, is a lot of that to do with the fact that he wants to leave or he knows he's leaving? Because that does happen when a player knows that they're on their way out, performances starts to drop. But he certainly has been very poor and looked very average this season. Um, Henry says, uh, no MTT. We are interested in everybody. Why? Cronky said, um, Cronky said, just inject 350 million into our squad and watch us lift the trophy under Arteta, ship out all of our fringe players. So he is not feeling, um, Samuel MTT. A couple of, you know, season ago, if I'd have said that, everybody would be saying, yeah, fantastic signing. But all right, well, that's a couple there that have not been too up for it. Um, C says, uh, Ore is more of a Ramsey replacement than an Ozil replacement. I don't know. I think he could replace, um, Ozil. Uh, Burhan says, uh, please check your DM. It's really important. I'm from India. Okay. I'll check the DM. <laughs> um, let's, uh, this is, uh, Rikesh, he says, um, he would be another Vermalian. Vermalian. No to Umtiti. Thomas Vermalian, of course. That's true. <laughs> that's a quite a good comparison, actually. Because Thomas Vermalian was a very, very good defender, but always, always injured. Always injured. And that's a great um that's a great comparison. That really is a great comparison. And um we don't want another player that's gonna be, you know, that we we know he's got lots of um talent. But then, you know, he, he's he's injured every minute. It's just, you know, if you're injured, there's no point, is it? You're not playing. Um, Kyle also says the Premier will come back. Uh, Liverpool win the first two games, win the league. Then uh, one player in the league gets coronavirus and the league becomes suspended. You just know it's going to happen. Um, Ebby says, uh, could Saka be the next Gnabry? I don't trust Arsenal. I think the Saka deal will get done. I really do. Um, I'd be very shocked if, and it would send a very bad message if, you know, we didn't get that deal done for Saka. But I do think there's a will to get that deal um, done for Saka. And as I said, you know, you, you look at the comparison. We're talking about Aurea days on a five-year contract signed in 2018, right? So that means that if any club comes in and wants him, they're going to have to, like, as I said, it's £40 million pounds plus for a guy that's a hot prospect, playing well, but still unproven, still years to do what, but they still will get 40 million for him. Whereas in the case of Saka, if Saka turned down that contract and said, well, actually, let me see what options are open to me. One year left on his deal, we'd be lucky to get 15, 20 million because teams are going to be like, well, you know what, if you don't, we're not paying 40 million, we'll just wait for his contract to run out. And this is what, we need to solve at Arsenal. Our best players and hottest prospects need to be tied down to long-term deals. That is when they 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 don't they're not vulnerable. Then, when you've got a player on a long-term deal, that means all the eggs, all, all you know, everything's all the balls in your court. I mean, 
you sell him if you want to sell him. But if not, you've got a player, you go, no, he's got five years left, you know, he signed a deal 2018, five years left on it. We don't feel like selling him. Or if you want him, you have to pay ridiculous amounts of money to get him. But that's what's something over the years. Uh, we've just not done. It's been terrible. Um, FIFA 20 live stream says, uh, Hussam Aurier will be one of the best players in no time. Sign him up now or else um, his value will go up and then other big clubs will go for him. Well, I think a lot of the um, big clubs are really looking at him. There's there's no secrets in football no more. You know, um, all of these teams have got top scouting systems and there's no secrets. They... They know who's performing. They know the stats of every single player. So there'll be a look, lot of teams looking at him right now. Um, so, yeah, there's no secrets. Um, Chris Dillon says, uh, Ozil is past his prime. Um, had him for a long time playing him much. We need players who want to win, not play for to lose or draw. Leno is a quality goalkeeper who saved us a lot of times. Um, Ekanaf says, what about Draxler? Nah, man. I'm... That sailed for me. That boat has sailed, um, Draxler. Um, wouldn't be interested in it. I mean, I'm just talking for me personally. I don't know what you guys feel, but Draxler for me, nah, them days, that's done. That's done. Um, Mike Dennis says, we always get Chelsea players near the end of their career. That's true. Well, you know, at the end of their career and one in £120,000 a week. Mm -mm. No chance. No chance for me. Um, Ish says, uh, we need Aubameyang and Saka to sign new deals. Um, I feel we need to get more of the Deadwood out, um, but would love Aurea. Um, So a lot of, lot of uh, you guys feeling Aurea at the moment. Um, this guy says uh, Mtiti is uh, the best possibility, but I would, but I would, sorry, Mtiti is not the best possibility, but I would take him. Also, thoughts on Saka to Dortmund rumor. The Saka to Dortmund rumor. Listen, Dortmund would definitely be interested in, as a lot of other teams would be interested in. Saka is for Arsenal to get that deal done. As I said, I still feel it will get done. Um, that Saka will sign. Um, for Arsenal. Um, Grant says, um, I would not keep Ozil if his wages are, were lowered. I remember I asked this question yesterday, would you keep him if his wages were lowered? This is just another way for his fanboys to keep him at the club. Sell his ass, even if it means for 50p. Jesus. Not a fan then, right? You're not a fan of uh, Ozil, right? <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> um Ivan says, what is your opinion on Aubameyang going to Chelsea? I've already said it. I mean, I will lose it. Just like what DT said when we did the podcast the other day, we're losing it if we sign, if we sell him. I will be very upset. We cannot sell our best player again, you know, to rivals. That cannot happen. Absolutely can't happen. Um, Arsenal Vlog says, uh, Arsenal should not sign Jonathan David. I've watched him and he is useless. Jonathan David, of course, the bit, uh, playing over there in Belgium, been linked with Arsenal. Um, he's not feeling him. Uh, Mr. Rotten says, uh, Werner's release clause is only 50 million. Um, we need to pay it. Let me just say as well, with these things, uh, release clauses, stuff like that, just go and pay the release clause and get Werner. If Werner's going to have to want to come to Arsenal, now, Timo Werner, he's got clubs all over Europe interested in signing him. He's playing in the uh, Champions League already with RB Leipzig. It's his choice where he wants to go. You can go and do the release clause, but you've got to know that the player will be interested in coming to Arsenal first. Would Werner choose Arsenal when he's got teams like, at the moment, Liverpool, who, you know, will be favourites to win the league again next season, will definitely be in the Champions League. Where would you go? If you've been honest, he's not an Arsenal fan. He's just uh, wants what's best for his career. So I think, you know, it's not as easy as just meet the release clause and he's on his way to Arsenal. The player's got to want to come as well, you know. The release clause is just so that you can talk to him. Um, Oliver says, uh, we've lost too many good players um, over the years and we need to start keeping them. So sign that contract, Abamian. Okay. 
You heard that over. Um, Josh says, is Havertz a better signing than an, an Aurea? Ooh. They're both very good players. I think Havertz is uh, rated higher. Um, you know, I've, I don't know if that's because playing in the Bundesliga, obviously, you know, there's more eyes on you. You know what I mean? It's more higher profile. Um, so, but they're both very good players. But I think you'd have to go Havertz as being, you know, he's really, really, um, you know, a top player in the making as well. So, um both good players, though. Both very good players. But you'd have to say Havertz is the better of the two at this moment in time. Um, let's get a few more. Um, this guy about Messi. <laughs> Please don't ask these stupid questions. Messi coming to Arsenal. I mean... <laughs> um, Oh, that's a, moving too fast, man. You guys, the comments too so quick. They're just flashing in front of me, man. Right. So I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a couple that we haven't already discussed. Um uh, Mateo says, Robbie, I support Barca. And uh you should sign uh Tobido, Tobido instead of him, TT. Uh he's one of the best center back talents in the world. Okay. Um and this guy says, Upamankana, um, Partey or Havertz, your preference. All of them would be fine. You know what I mean? But do we have the money to do that at the moment? Definitely not going to have the money to do that at the moment. We know that. So we have to be looking at it realistically, you know? Look at it realistically. And um, realistically, some of those uh, names there, Upamankana, don't think it's doable. Havertz, don't think it's doable. Parte possibly doable, you know. Um, sign Havertz, Indica, and Aurea. This guy says, um, there's one I just was trying to get. Uh, this one he says, Aurea is yet to hit his peak because of where he, re he is at. Um, would we'll take over from Urzil, love Urzil, but his wages are hurting us, um, and his performances, and he puts uh, fingers down. And uh, this guy, this is one, I haven't heard this uh, linked uh, throughout the whole of, uh, since we've been discussing all these things. He said, persuade Maris to come to Arsenal from City as a, as a replacement. Maris is more of a winger, though. You know, Maris is not, you know, he's a winger, isn't he? Mar Maris is not really a, um, a number 10 I suppose he could play. He could possibly play that role. I just don't think uh, Mar is a good player, but that's not what we need at the moment. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's what we need at the moment. Mar is, and though, don't get me wrong, he's an absolutely top player. I think underrated as well. Had a very good season so far, um, but not what we need right now, in my opinion. Um, Robbie also have money. Our money is with El Nenny and his likes. Ship them all out and bring in something new. We can afford the best players. Let the board make Arsenal great again. I'm tired of being getting laughed at by other club fans. I hear you on that, bro. I hear you. Um, James says, uh, what's worse, Van Persie to Manchester United or Aubameyang to Chelsea? They're both terrible. Um, and they both got similarities in the, you know, Basically, Manchester United, when they took Van Persie, they knew they needed someone to score goals. They had a good team, but they weren't scoring goals. And they brought him in and they won the league. They knew what they needed to do and they did it, right? The same could be said of Chelsea. They've got um, a good young team, good, good up-and-coming team, but they need more goals from their strikers. If they brought in a Bamiang, it would, you know, it would step them right up, you know, and make them kick on. So... You know, it's, it has similarities and it cannot, it, we, you know, we cannot afford to make that happen. If he does go, he's got to go abroad somewhere. He cannot be going to any of our rivals. Um, if that happens, the fans are going to be very, very upset and they're going to have a good reason to be very upset. Um, this guy says, Arsenal can raise the money from the sale of Mustafi, Socrates, Kalasinac, Mikatarian, Chambers and Niles to fund Party, Arir and Disasi. Not as easy as that. These players, well, we know Mikatarian wants to go, but again, he's not going to be able to raise that much money, but you get rid of some of the rages. 
Uh, Kalasinac, still on a long-term deal. Wood, he's on very high wages, Kalasinac, but he's going to have to want to go. Socrates, all right, you might be able to move him on. Mustafi might be difficult to move on. Again, he's on big wages. So unless somebody comes in matching those sort of wages, he might not want to move either. He might just say, I'll sit it out until the end of next season. So it's not as easy as just, right, get rid of them. Out they go. You can't do that no more in football. If you've got a player tied to a contract and you end that contract early, you know, you're, you know, the players got to have to want to agree to do that. And some players don't. And uh, let's get one more. Uh, Ronald saying, bring David Silver in. He's still quality, but he's going to be going back to Spain um, at the end of the season once he's finished. And plus, we need to get um, a younger player in. And uh, uh, let me do this one. I've seen flashing up a lot. He says, Debucci or Andre Santos? Do you know what? I think Santos, no. Um, but do you know what with Debucci, right? He, he was injured a lot again. That's another one. Um, and I didn't think he when he when he did come in, I didn't think um he got a fair chance. I don't think he got a fair chance when he came in. So I probably, even though Andre Santos scored that great goal against Chelsea, that's about all he did. I think I would go for Debucci. Thanks very much for watching the show today. We're going to be back this evening um with um the uh, evening show. So make sure you look out for that. Have yourself a great day um, and keep it locked here to AFTV. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll be back later on.